Do you have a plain looking building like this one on your layout? Well, give it some updates and you might get something that looks like this. If you want to know how, stay tuned. You're watching the New York Subway Sherwood Subdivision. I'm Harold. Thanks for watching. We continue with our layout updates and we're now going to work on this building. It's called Chubb Industries. Their business is renovating rail cars. And you can see by its appearance, it's a metal type building. It started its life as a pike stuff, two stall engine house. Continuing now with our Chubb Industries project, you can see we've fabricated some floors inside the structure. So our employees will have a place to stand while they're working. In addition, we have fabricated this barrier between the two sides so that the painting side, which is this side, will not interfere with the mechanical work that's going on over here. Likewise, we have this small office right here. So we have fabricated this back wall, actually goes like this inside. And that will serve as the barrier between the wall and the tracks. Although it's small, it will give us a sense that there's an office there, maybe it has a locker room for the employees and some storage. So we'll get these uh, items painted and installed and when we come back we'll see the result. We've made some progress on the interior of Chubb Industries. We've painted the floor and we've added this partition to separate the mechanical update area from the painting area. We've also, you may be able to see it, We've drawn lines around the perimeter of the building and we've laid out some fencing that we're going to be using as part of the surround of the parking lot. With the building in place now, we can see some other things. You may not be able to see it, but I've built a small partition in here and that will serve as the backdrop for our office. The office door is right here. We've also added glazings to all the windows and to the door. Our next step will be the build out of the parking lot and we'll show you that coming up. We are proceeding with our parking lot. The area has been covered with Woodland Scenics Fine Ballast Gray Blend number 813, excuse me, B1393. It's a fine ballast. What we're going to do is give it the same sort of treatment that we would track ballast, except we're not going to use the pipette. In this case, we're going to spray it with alcohol, and then we're going to follow up with a spray of Woodland Scenics Scenic Cement. So here comes the alcohol. And what we're trying to do is provide a wetting agent to allow the Scenic Cement to penetrate. And you'll notice there are a couple spots where a little too aggressive, so we'll clean those up after we're done. Oh, remember, once this gets wet, don't touch it because you'll make it worse. Here comes the scenic cement. That should be enough. You'll notice I didn't cover up the tracks because they've already had this treatment or are about to. But I did protect the area in the back, which is where Sherwood Plumbing Supply is, and this area over here, which is where our roadway is. We're going to let this dry, and we'll clean up a couple of these little spots where the ballast got displaced by the spraying, and that will be the end of our parking lot. Stay tuned. We return to our scene, and now we're going to look at some improvements in our parking lot and in the structure. When I looked at the parking lot, from its original design, it was sort of all this color, like that gray color that you see here. And it's kind of really monochromatic and I didn't want that, I wanted something to break it up. So I've added some ground foam here. It's uh, Woodland Scenics Burnt Grass. And I think that gives it a little more texture and a little more interest. The building is in place because I'm doing a test fitting of the interior floors. I intend to install them next. 
The other things you'll see that we have done to the building, for example, you can see all these wires here. We've added the lights. One, two, three woodland scenic stick-on lights, a nano light for our little office here. You can see we've added additional ventilation. This being the side of the building where the painting occurs, it will need additional ventilation. Beyond that, we've also added these lights over the doors. They're Woodland Scenic's gooseneck lamps. Our next step will be to permanently install the floors, get the structure into place, and install the fencing that goes all the way around it. You'll see that coming up. I believe that the next logical step would be to install the fencing. So I took the Woodland Scenic's fence and kind of laid it out approximately where it would go and a couple of considerations. First of all, had to be enough setback here to allow a car to not be on the surface of our roadway while it's going through the fence. Second, this is our yard lead right here. It's a pretty tight curve, so I discovered by running through a few cars that the fence is going to have to be set back uh, beyond the ends of the ties here to allow for the overhang. I continued and laid out the fence, and my next intention was to install it until I remembered one thing. If I install the fence, how am I going to drill holes for the parking lot lights? Well, the answer is I can't. So instead of the fence installation, the parking lot lights installation will take place. And I've marked out with these T-pins approximate locations based on where the fence is for the parking lot lights. We'll do the parking lot lights next. And if you stay tuned, I'll show you how it's done. Well, now it's time to drill the holes for the pole lights. Before drilling any holes, you better make sure underneath your layout that you're not going to run into any of the supporting members that are supporting your layout. I've done that check and I think we're good. So the process is like this, and I'm sorry if, it, if my hand gets in your way. Find where the hole is. I've got a 332nd inch drill bit. There we go. Well, we've managed to feed our wire into the small hole. Go beyond underneath the layout. Give it a little tug to pull the wire all the way through. And this is usually a press fit. If you don't like the way it sits, you can actually glue it into place. That's the way you do this. Now all we have to do is do this seven more times. We'll show you the result when we get back. You can see now that we have all the lights installed. Some of them are in need of a little help to stand up straight. And we'll do that with some glue. But I wanted you to see what that looks like before we start our next step, which is installing the fence. We've come to the point where installing the fence on the front is our next task. When you use these Woodland Scenics fences, they really come in two types. The type in the front, you'll notice, has no posts on either end, and its little prongs are in the middle, whereas the type at the back is the opposite. It's got posts on either end, and the little prongs are on either end. So, you choose which one you want. In this case, we have a post here to which we are going to connect this, so we'll be using this one first. Now, just in there loose, because I didn't want to glue it into place until I saw it was in the right place. But I think this will do. I haven't glued any of the others together. I can do that if I want. But right now, we're just trying to make sure we have a correct position. There you have it. All the fencing is in place. I know some of it needs to be straightened up and probably glued into position because it won't stay straight, but that's the way fences are. Not every industrial fence is perfectly straight to begin with. I hope it gives us a more industrial look. Obviously, next steps, we're going to put the lights back and make sure that they're properly positioned. 
put the building back on, light up the lights, and we'll see what it looks like. So stay tuned for that. We now see the final result of our work on Chubb Industries. You can see we've put the lights in and they're illuminated. We have lights over the doors. We have parking. We have some miscellaneous things sitting around in boxes or barrels. Fences all up. And we even have a couple of customers. Plus this big tank in the back, which we're not sure what's in it. This is the scene at night. And you can see all the lights in the parking lot are on. The interior lights in the building can be are seen. And you can see the lights over the doors. So what began as a very plain structure that looked like this now has a lot of detail and a lot more interest. And this is our final scene. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please join us again for another video on the Norfolk Southern Sherwood Subdivision.